Welcome to Lockdown Embryology with me, Alice Roberts. We're looking now at the third week of embryonic development in the womb. In the first week, the fertilised egg developed into a blastocyst, a fluid-filled ball of cells, and that blastocyst implanted in the womb. In the second week, the tissues of the embryo itself, the inner cell mass, have divided into two layers and the tissues of the outer cell mass have also divided into two layers and there's this new tissue that I'm showing in orange here the extra embryonic mesoderm and that lines the outside of the bilaminar germ disc the hyperblast and the epiblast with its associated cavities forms a connecting stalk and then also lines the inside of the outer layers the layers of the developing embryo which are going to form the fetal part of the placenta the outermost layer is this multinucleate mass of cells, the syncytiotrophoblast, and that has got spaces within it, lacunae, which by now are filled with maternal blood. So blood from maternal capillaries is starting to flow into those spaces, and that's the beginning of the utero-placental circulation. The inner layer of these placental tissues is called the cytotrophoblast, composed of individual cells. And there I've labelled up the extra embryonic mesoderm as well. So here is this tiny little embryo implanted in the womb at the end of week two into the beginning of week three when it's due to undergo a major transformation. It changes from being a two-layered disc into a three-layered disc and the tissues of that three-layered disc then go on to make all the tissues of your body. So I'm now just focusing in on this two-layered disc, the bilaminar germ disc and its associated cavities and the mesoderm around the outside of that so that we can understand its 3D structure. And I'm going to take a slice out of it just to make that even more explicit and draw it as though it's a Victoria sponge cake that we've taken a large quarter slice out of. So there it is. The cavities associated with this bilaminar germ disc are the amniotic cavity which sits above the epiblast and the yolk sac which hangs down below the hypoblast and is actually lined with cells which have derived from the hypoblast itself that's why I've colored them in yellow the same as the hypoblast and the epiblast and the lining of the amniotic cavity are in blue so the second picture that I've drawn here is just an enlargement of that smaller area in the first picture with the germ disc at its center and that is what's going to form the body of the embryo itself. So I think it's worth just checking the arrangements here, checking the topography, making sure that you can recognize which layer is the epiblast, which layer is the hypoblast and the relationships of the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac to that bilaminar germ disc as well. You might want to sketch along, maybe pause this video and make your own drawings of embryological development as we go. But now we're going to look at what's happening in this third week, a very dynamic process where we transform the two-layered germ disc into a three-layered germ disc. Imagine you're floating in the amniotic cavity and you're looking down then on the surface of the epiblast, which I'm painting this lovely pale blue. Up towards the head end, the cranial end of this germ disc, we can see a depression and then down towards the tail end, the caudal end, we can see a groove starting to form. First of all, a shallow depression and then that becomes deeper and deeper until it becomes quite a distinct cleft. And in fact, what's happening at that groove in the back of this epiblast is that cells are starting to pile into the midline and then disappear inside the germ disc. So here are all these structures then, the primitive streak, that groove, at the cranial end of that is the primitive pit, a very deep pit surrounded by a little mound of tissue called the primitive node. At the very cranial end we can see that depression, the oropharyngeal membrane, just as though you pressed your thumb down on the epiblast. And there's a cloacal membrane right at the caudal end. These are really important structures they're going to be the openings of your gut tube. They're going to be essentially the openings of your mouth and your anus. So looking at this germ disc at this stage of development, it doesn't look like a human yet, it doesn't look like any kind of animal, but it already knows which is its head end, which is its tail end, which is its left and which is its right. 
Now let's look at a cross section through the primitive streak and look at what's happening there. The blue arrows indicate that cells are proliferating and then piling into the midline where they're disappearing inside the embryo. It's almost like you've decided to make a sandwich by assembling the bread first and now you're injecting the jam through the middle of that sandwich, forcing it to create a new layer, the jam between the two pieces of bread. And actually what's happening is some of those cells which derive from the epiblast are also pushing the original hypoblast cells out of the way to make a new layer. Now we have these three layers then. The bilaminar germ disc has become a trilaminar germ disc with ectoderm on the top now, endoderm on the bottom and in the middle the intraembryonic mesoderm. Having drawn that cross section through the primitive streak, now I'm drawing a longitudinal section from the head down to the tail of the embryo so that we can see those layers again. There's the ectoderm on top facing the amniotic cavity, the endoderm on the bottom facing the yolk sac, and we can see where the ectoderm and endoderm are firmly pinched together at the oropharyngeal membrane and the cloacal membrane. We can also see that mesoderm, that jam in the sandwich, starting to fill up the gap away from those two membranes. And something very interesting is happening at the primitive pit. Here we find a rod of tissue starting to grow inwards into the body of this embryo. And this rod of tissue is the very first strengthening element along the axis of the developing embryo. It's like a precursor to your spine. And in fact, it later gets replaced and obliterated as the spine itself develops. It's called the notochord, and it's a feature that's possessed by a group of animals that are all called chordates, many of which are vertebrates, but some of which aren't, and they just have that notochord as a strengthening element along the axis of their bodies, even when they're adults. But in us, the notochord is going to be obliterated at some point, but it has a really important role to play before then. It actually communicates with the overlying tissues of the epiblast and starts to encourage those tissues, those cells, to turn into what's going to be the precursor of the nervous system. But we'll look at that in another video. I now want to look at what's happening with this intraembryonic mesoderm and the extraembryonic mesoderm. What you can see is the jam in the sandwich pushes right out to the edge until it just joins up with the extraembryonic mesoderm, that layer that lines the outside of the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac and forms the connecting stalk as well. So this is the major transformation that happens in week three then. It's called gastrulation. In some more primitive animals, it does actually create a gut at the same time, which is why it's called gastrulation. The gaster bit tells you it's something to do with guts. We haven't quite created guts in a human embryo. That's going to happen a little bit later. So that word gastrulation just means the transformation of the two-layered, the bilaminar germ disc, into a three-layered trilaminar germ disc. And there are other things starting to happen in week three as well that we've got a hint of there. Something happening to the epiblast where it overlies the notochord. And I will examine that and then expand to look at what's happening to this embryo in week four in the very next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, please share. And I hope that you'll join me again for the next week of embryonic development in utero. And just take a moment to reflect on the fact that this is what you looked like three weeks into your own development. A very strange, oddly shaped jam sandwich.